<clears throat> shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahusha Bashem, Rachakodash. Giving double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone. Shalom and salutation to all you sincere Akim across the four winds, pushing us truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasama God from a DC camp. Coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim, Yahusha Bashim, Hakudash, to feed the elect. Um, <clears throat> I want to make um, um, a lesson today about a concept that's been in my um, that's been in my mind. Uh, I was just thinking about it all day um, about, um, you know, the saying, um, you know, the United States, the land of the free um, home of the brave. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the concept was focusing on that term land of the free. Um, as we know, that term originally, um, you know, came from the fact that um America fought for its freedom uh, back in 1776 against um, the British invasion. Um, you know, and basically they, um, you know, the 13th colony did not want to be under um, the suppression of a king, basically. All right. They wanted democracy and they wanted to set up a republic. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, that's the original term. All right? It says home of the brave because a lot of them, um, you had a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of Americans had to basically lay down their lives. They uh, they died. They went they went to uh, the battle against uh, the British armies. Um, you know, so that's the original um, concept of you know the United States, the USA, land of the free and home of the brave. That's the original concept. But when I I really wanted to dive deeper into the spiritual aspect of um, what's truly what I really. Um, you know what I thought about today when I when I when I saw that land of the free, and what we know about the United States, whether you know you like it or not, according to the Bible, uh, the United States is uh, Great Babylon, the virgin daughter of Babylon, as uh, prophesied in the, in, the, um, in the scriptures, and of course the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans that have been enslaved, uh, captive, um, for going on for over four hundred years. Um, you know, those are the Israelites. Those are the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's been established already. Again, whether you like it, believe it or not. Um, but, and then it's amazing because <clears throat> the land of the free so-called is the land where the majority of Israelites are captive. Um, you know, you have a great a greater population of um, so-called black men, beginning with the tribe of Judah. You know, so-called African men, African-American men, um, <clears throat> West Indians. Haitians incarcerated um, at a high clip. Um, you also have a, a lot of um, a lot of uh, so-called Hispanic men um, incarcerated into these jails at a high clip. America has the highest level of incarceration out of any nation on the planet Earth. So just by that standard, you know, this concept is off. But I wanted to focus more on the spiritual aspect, especially the dark part of the land of the free. Like, you know, what freedom is it really, to be honest? You know, and what I really want to focus on is the freedom, right? If you're talking about this land, what is what is what is the freedom? Because it's not, it's clearly not not going to jail, right? Because this is the the land of, again, the, the number one um, <clears throat> mass incarceration statistics on the entire planet Earth is the United States of America. So, so when you call it the land of the free, you can't really say it's because of actual freedom. So what freedom is it really about? Um, what you realize is, is really when you go deeper, you realize it's really freedom to commit sin uh, without repercussions, without judgment. Um, and that's the reason why, you know, and, and, and then the brave souls, who are those brave souls who uh, fought? Like you got the military, you got the United States military. Um, the American military has got the greatest army um, ever assembled. Um, you know, in the history of the, the history of human, humankind, the United States military, the Marines on the SEALs, um, you know, you got all these different agencies with the smartest people across the world uh, from different nationalities, CIA agents, FBI agents. So America's gathered the best of the best brave individuals, but brave individuals that fight to protect um, this land. Why? Because this, this is the land where you're free to sin um, without um <clears throat> without judgment uh without yeah without judgment without punishment for the most part um unless the gravity is so bad that you know you have to kind of be put in jail but for the most part the law statutes commandments of the heavenly father 
you know, um, Yahweh, you know, um, the laws is this is the land that's supposed to be the land that frees you from, um, you know, having to be righteous, having the, the you know, to have any type of goodness. You can do whatever you want to do. That's wicked. And um, you'll be protected, basically. All right. And that's the concept that was in my mind. And um, I wanted <clears throat> to, um, speaking of brave, the brave souls, right, the brave souls who fight for this for this um, for this uh, uh, wicked empire. Um, <clears throat> this is book called uh, uh, Brave New World. Uh, you should, you know, you can check it out whenever, you know, you have time. Um, Brave New World. And I'm not going to read the book. I'm just going to read um, the synopsis of Brave New World because Brave New World goes into this whole new mentality. You know, this mentality that's different from um, the customs that the earth has had for uh, thousands of years, uh, which the majority of cultures of the heathens, when I say heathens, I'm talking about anybody who's not an Israelite. The majority of those cultures are based off of the culture of the Israelites, all right? You know, a lot of, you know, the, the God believing in God is certain things, how they, they carry themselves with families and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> so the, the world has been moving a certain type of way for a long time. And, uh, but now we in, 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 in this brave new world where you have people that uh, uh, basically, you know, have a lot of pride and decide that, hey, we have to, we can't be chained. We have to be in a land or an environment uh, where we can't be chained or we can't have boundaries, right? We we just, we have to be able to be free to do whatever we want to do with no judgment, um, you know, and, and at all, basically. And, and now when you uh, look up um, the book Brave New World, it says, um, the question I was asked is, why was uh, Brave New World controversial? You know, for people that know, right, the author was other, um, Aldous Huxley. All right. If you know, you know. If you don't, you know, try to look into it. It says, uh, why was Brave New World controversial? It says, with its theme of sexual promiscuity, promiscuity, so like it, with, with its themes of sexual promis, promiscu, promiscuity, drug use, and suicide, Brave New World tells a story of in a bleak future where um, the populace is manipulated and controlled by the state, which that's exactly kind of like what we live in. All right. Um, you know, we, we and, and it says uh, Brave New World 1980 because of his character's acceptance of promiscuous sex, all right, promiscuous lifestyle. And um, and there's so many other um, sins um, that that you allow to do. You know, this is what America is really for. America is that land um, where wicked individuals um, could be wicked for the most part, and 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 be free to be wicked, right? I think the only thing is, is you just gonna you just can't take somebody's life. Uh, and that's about it. But we really free, basically free to do anything else, you know, besides basic thing like stealing, you know. But the biggest the biggest uh, sins usually comes through, you know, sexually attached sins like adultery, um, homosexuality, all these different things. Those usually tend to be the biggest sins that. You know, <clears throat> people really should be punished about right now. What I wanna um, I wanna uh deal with first was um, you know, no no no, let's not deal with it. Let's deal with this first. All right, let's deal with um, this article right here uh first. <clears throat> you know, cause I just wanna focus on two sins that you basically are free to commit without no judgment. Um, meaning you know, yeah, you're free to commit without no, no judgment. You know, um. In the United States, the land of the free. Um, it says America is changing how it views accepting <clears throat> gay and lesbian people. New poll reveals it says the percentage of Americans who say they are satisfied with the acceptance of gay and lesbian people in the country has reached a new peak at 62 percent, according to a poll released Wednesday. All right. Um, it says people, the gallops annual mood of the nation poll as people about their satisfaction with aspects of U.S. life and policy areas, ranging from the overall quality of life to the nation's military, military strength and environmental issues. It says American satisfa satisfaction with the acceptance of gay and lesbian people stood out in, in the 2022 poll because it reached the highest level 
the nation has seen since Gallup started tracking the trend, the trend in 2001. All right. So it's been 23 years, 20 yeah, 23 years. And um, the majority of Americans, right, the majority of Americans, because it, it was always going to be a process. Um, you wasn't the United States. Um, Babylon wasn't meant to be um, extremely at the peak of his wickedness from at, at, at his uh, inception. All right. It was always going to be a process. It was always going to be uh, multiple generations before um, the elites, you know, the head Edomites, right, the Rothschilds, the Rockefeller, because, you know, we know those are the people that are around behind it, this stuff. The children of the devil, the children of Satan, basically, they're behind, you know, doing their thing. And one thing one thing that they understand is that um, they understand that things some, sometimes you know, when you have goals and aspirations, um, it's not going to be accomplished in the first generation. It might take several generations um, before you're able to twist and warp the minds of the people. And uh, we've come to this point now where, you know, I'm I'm sure like at, at some point it was only like maybe 1% that uh, accepted uh, the lifestyle. But now it's 62%. It's probably more. Um, it's probably more, way more than that. Um, because now we finally reached this level where this is indeed the land of of um, land of the free. And like I said, land of the free, people that were free to commit sin with no judgment, all right, with no regards um, to the law of the Most High, all right? So <clears throat> so it says, um, it says, though the peak is statistically similar to 2016 levels, um, poll resp- respondents also reported a greater level of satisfaction with, with acceptance of gay and lesbian people than any other 20 other issue Gallup tracked this year. All right. So not only, um, you know, not only um, are they reporting um, at, be, at being accepted, um, they actually they're going overboard and say, well, we like the fact that most people are. Um, Acceptant of the lifestyle, you know, and again, it's it's it's, um, but it, but the thing is, is that when you get to a certain point in this in this gospel and this truth, you understand that these things must happen, right? I mean, America has to achieve um the highest level of wickedness that um a nation can ever achieve in the history of humankind. I mean, that is, uh, that's always been America's, America's destiny. So once you understand it, it's not really, it's no longer really about being angry. Um, it's about being understanding. Um, and I think that with year, with the years, you, because anger a lot of time is, um, could also be a sign of lack of understanding uh, of certain things. So you just get angry. But once you, but there's a feeling, there's an, um, there's an emotion I'm not gonna say there's a there's a um there's a level higher than anger. It's called and and, and it's understanding. Once you understand, you're like okay, um, and you look around, you're like, well, <laughs> you know, it, it's getting there. Like we really close to perfection, um, full perfection of uh, of evil and wickedness. And and you for that to happen, you got to have a land who's willing to spend money, uh, because you gotta protect their lifestyle. I mean, if a lifestyle is 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 look there's wicked across the world. And people are gonna want to do or hurt to these people that are living um, a wicked life. Um, you have to have an army that's that a strong. You gotta have the strongest army. Um, you gotta have the strongest organizations, and uh, to make sure that you know you have a land that could provide a safe place um, for individuals that are gonna live a life that's uh, abnormal. So yeah, they have to be free from oppression. You know, because listen, oppression could go could go both ways. I mean, the wicked can oppress the righteous, and the righteous can oppress the wicked. You know, oppression. You know, the scripture tells you this double to that which is, um, you know, uh, the righteous will be seeking out to destroy the wicked, um, just like the wicked will be seeking out to destroy the righteous. Because um, the scripture tells you the righteous is an abomination unto the wicked, and so is the wicked an abomination unto the righteous. Um, so. Both have have to have power and strength to protect to protect themselves. And uh, the United States of America is the perfect land, um, you know, with enough military strength and intellectual capability to protect anybody that wishes and wants to live that abnormal these abnormal lifestyles with uh, no retribution, no punishment, no judgment. Um, 
Now, let's deal with adultery. That's another thing, too, uh, that we talk about. Um, it says adultery, adultery laws are the laws in various countries that deal with extramarital sex. Historically, many cultures consider adultery a very serious crime. All right? That's why I said like it. But that goes back to the law, statutes, and commandments. All right. Well, if you're talking about that, should not commit adultery. That that's not a law of the heathens. That's a law of the Israelites. Now you have the heathens that also keep keep and practice that because it just makes sense not to want to take somebody else's wife. And uh, you know, um, it says some, but but if you are somebody who wants to take and wants to covet and wants to sleep with somebody's wife. And you don't want to be judged. You don't want to be punished for that. Then that's why you come here. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to, this is the land, you know, of the people that are free to commit sin for the most part for a great, but you know, for the greater, yeah, for the most part without judgment. All right. Um. <clears throat> so it says, uh, historically, many cultures consider adultery a very serious crime. Some, some. Sub subject to some subject to severe punishment, especially in the case of extramarital sex involving a married woman and a man other than her husband. Right. Be the reason why I says especially is because adultery is is between is when a man a married woman sleeps with another man, or a or a man sleeps with a, a woman who's married uh, to another man. That's that is adultery. Anything else is um is just um it's myth it's 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 garbage. It's made up woman Catholicism feminist garbage. Um it says um <clears throat> it says sex involving a married woman and a man other than her husband with penalties including capital punishment, which is the death penalty. All right. It says mutilation or torture. Such punishments have gradually fallen into disfavor, of course, because people that want um, to commit wickedness uh, get persecuted. Right. The wicked, the wicked get persecuted by the righteous. So the wicked has to gain power or gain a land, or gain power uh, to protect the wicked lifestyle, right? It says, especially in the Western countries, all right? And who rules the West is the Edomites, the so-called white race, all right? And, you know, that's the mindset of the Edomite is that there is no God. Um, people shouldn't be punished. For the most part, people shouldn't be punished um, for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's the mentality of the Edomites, primarily the Edomites, you know. Um, it says, uh, in Western countries from the 19th century, in countries in countries where adultery is still a criminal offense, punishments range from fines to caning. All right, it says, and even capital punishment. Since the 20th century, criminal laws against adultery have become controversial, with most Western countries repealing them. Of course, uh, most most countries that criminalize adultery are those where the dominant religion is Islam, and several. Sub-Saharan African Christian majority countries, but there are some notable exceptions to this rule, namely the Philippines and the 16 U.S. states. You know the states gonna be there, man. Come on. Um, it says, um, however, and even in jurisdictions that have this this decriminalized adultery, adultery may still have legal consequences, particularly in jurisdictions. With uh, fault based divorce laws, right? Um, and that's why a lot of um, a lot of states have a no fault, um, <clears throat> no fault divorce divorce law um, to protect <clears throat> to protect women um, in particular um, for uh, you know, leaving it um, leaving a husband after committing adultery um, and leaving with their with their goods with their resources. Um, so basically, the system wants to allow women to. Commit adultery, right? Sleep with another man while she's married, and then decides to leave him. Decide to leave him for that man and take half of half of his uh, resources. Um, of course, just by saying that, if you have any righteous soul, right, righteous uh, bone in you, you know that's extremely abnormally wicked. But <clears throat> for a lifestyle like that to be established in the land, you must have. You know, you must have a land that accepts that, and you must have a land that's powerful enough to protect um, people that, that that live wickedly like that. And that's where <clears throat> that's where the United States comes in play because that is the that is the 
<clears throat> this is the land that was ordained and prophesied uh, to be that land that would uh, allow um, people to um, sin freely with no uh, no judgment. All right, so that's why these things are happening. Like I said, at some point you just you you get understanding. So um, it's not you know it's, of course it's upsetting, but you know it is what it is. You know we just we're just reporting the truth. That's all, man. Um, it says. Um, it says uh, fault-based divorce laws where adultery almost almost always constitutes a ground for divorce and may be a factor in property settlement. Just like I spoke. Um, it says the custody of children. That's another thing. The denial of alimony. Right. Because uh, the scripture says that custody of the children. The Bible says custody of the children should go to the father. Um, America says, nah, God is wrong. Uh, custody has to go to the women. Now, the majority of the planet Earth uh, disagrees with um, the, um, with women having custody of the children. That's why you had to have a land um, that would welcome um, evil and, and abnormalities and anything that's off and wicked. You you needed a land that that to see the highest level of wickedness that that uh, on Earth. You needed a land strong enough powerful enough um you know to protect evil uh and make sure evil is free to to, to roam i mean that's that's the reason why you have the united states of america that's why the, uh, america is so great and so powerful um it's all destined all right so destined um it says um let me see let me see it says uh adultery is not a ground for divorce in jurisdictions which have adopted a no fault uh divorce model but may still be a factor in children custody and uh, property disputes. So I'm going to stop right there, man, because everything else goes into how, you know, the other, the other nations. Um, oh, now I got to read this. It says the criminal status of adultery has attracted criticism, especially where there are violent penalties. The head of the United Nations expert body charged with um, identifying ways to eliminate laws that discriminate against women or are discriminatory to them in terms of implementation of impact. See, the reason why the focus is on women is, is because they know that the only true adultery is when it's usually when the woman that is married sleeps with another man. All right. So. So and they know that the man, they, that's the thing, the man who slept with the woman will be punished. Um, but they want to make sure the woman who's really caught in the middle, who's starting, who is the main uh, denominator, uh, they want to make sure she doesn't get punished, um, you know, which is, you know, feminist feminism at its, at its finest. Um, you know, the husband, he can go ahead and clap that dude that slept with his wife. Yeah, it's all right, you know, yeah. That dude's gonna lose his life, and then the husband's gonna do life, and in a big house. But that woman has to be protected. Which, of course, when you think about it, like, well, that's wrong. That's abnormal. Yes, it is. That's the reason why, um, you know, America is Babylon. One of the many reasons why. And yeah, most of the world will rebel against this, but most of the world can't do shit about it because they don't have to fight the firepower. They don't have the military. They don't have the destiny that that now um. That America has, all right? Um, so now let's um, get the precepts, all right? Because we got the gist of it. We got the gist of what, when I think of, you know, USA, the land of the free, home of the brave, I don't, I don't think about freedom, <laughs> you know, of like, no, no, no. Because we're, we're still slaves, a lot of our people in jail. And to me, it means the land where people are free to sin, Um with, with, you know, with no judgment and a land powerful enough to protect you so you can live as a full-blown sinner and a wicked uh, individual, um, you know. So that's that's the way I see it. I see it, you know. Um, it says, uh, Revelation 17 and 1, it says, The doom of Babylon, right? The doom of Babylon, it says, And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. All right. So the great whore, which we know to be, you know, the United States. And get, again, whether you like it, believe it or not. All right. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you think. Um, <clears throat> it says, um, 
Verse 2, it says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication, right? With that philosophy, a philosophy that uh, you could be wicked and evil. This is the land that, that, that uh, would allow you to be all of those things, and you're going to be fine. Um, this is Revelation 17 to 3. It says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of name of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in pulp, purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. It's talking about the riches that America has had dating back to the, the 30s, man. Um, the gold, the silver, uh, the slavery, you know. It says, uh, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of a fornication. Right, it's pride. Like, it's, it's, you know, America is very proud of this accomplishment. This accomplishment, and it's, you know, uh, you know, so. Now, verse 5, it says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Right, and it's not talking about, um, it's not talking about uh, the Vatican, uh, you know, because the Vatican, one of the reasons why the scripture said that sits among, the great horde sits upon many waters. When you go to 17 and uh, 15, uh, Revelation 17, 15, it tells you that the waters that you see are the people, tongues. All right? Why? Because it's talking about a land that will have a lot of all the different nations being represented right here on this land. All right, And the only land that has that is the United States of America. It's the land that has all the 18 nations represented right here. All right, so, you know, uh, so now let's go to uh, Romans chapter 1 and 22. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, right? Because it's a new wisdom on the earth, all right? It's a, it's a new wisdom on the earth that, hey, you know what? Righteousness is being established, you know, according to the scriptures. Um, when I say established, now righteousness, righteousness has been written in the, in, the, in the book and has been applied to the best of the ability that, the, you know, Israel could and some of the nation that tried. But Esau, you know, the man who slated the world in the last days, right? The Edomites, the so-called white man. He says, well, we're going to do something different. All right. The new wisdom is the hell with trying to be righteous. We need to be. We just need. We just need to do us, which really what it means. We got to do the opposite. We have to be just us, be wicked. But we know that that's not good and, and a lot of people ain't gonna like it and you know so therefore we have to create the most powerful military we have to create the most powerful organ spying organizations all these different things to protect um these abnormal and wicked and abominable lifestyles um it says um romans chapter 1 verse 22 it says professing themselves to be wise they became fools and change the glory of the incorruptible power into an image made like unto the corruptible, unto like the corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore the Most High also gave them to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Right, who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who was blessed forever a month. For this cause the Most High gave them up unto vile affections. And that's what you see right here. Um, you know, vile affections everywhere, man. Um, it's no longer a problem. People just do it, man. People just do it. And they do it with vigor, too. Um, it says, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, right? Like likewise, also the men leaving the natural use, the natural use of the woman. All right, you know that's why you have uh, Janelle Monae. I mean Janelle Monae, man. Listen, talk about talk about a waste of a waste of, a waste of uh, human flesh. You know, a beautiful woman, man. I mean Janelle Monae. Like, listen, she this, hey, man. But um, but that's the thing is um, you know that's that's she's a she's a clear representation of. Or that type of lifestyle. I mean, she can only do that if she's here because this is the land that was prophesied to, to be able to allow her to do that and protect her so she can continue to do that and continue to push that into our so-called communities, right? So-called Negroes, right? 
um, southern tribes of, of, of the nation of Israel and amongst all the rest of the tribes. This thing is, you know, and, and put, putting that publicly like that so that the children, because it's really about the children. Remember, this is about getting to the generations. Um, it's really for Gen Z, you know, <laughs> you know, so they can get that and really just run with it, you know. Um, so it says, verse 26, for this cause, the Most High gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the, nat the natural use the natural use into that which is against nature. Right? It's against nature, man. What's going on here is against nature. Uh, it said, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Yeah, that's why when you see this lifestyle, you you know, you got to turn, you know, you get this. It's feeling in your gut, man. That feeling in your gut is basically you knowing that, man, that's off, man. That's off, you know. But ain't shit you could do about it, you know what I'm saying? Ain't ish you could do about it, baby. Um, Romans 8, 1 and 28, it says, and Even as they did not like to retain the most high in their knowledge, the most high gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. All right, so. And this is, these are the lifestyles. All right. This is what you're free. You're talking about the land of the free. This is this is why it's the land of the free. It's the land of the free. You're free to do what? You're free to do Romans 1 and 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. You feel to what? You, you're free to fornicate. You're free to do wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. You're free to have envy, murder. That's a little, I mean, you know, you know, America does push murder. If you can get away with it, you know what I'm saying? As long as you do it with the right people, you know, and you can get away with it, you'll get away with it. You know what I'm saying? But if you're Israel, you know, you know, murder, you know, uh, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of the most high, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, you know. And it's mostly really Israel because the nations are the nations, you know. It's Israel is, is just caught up in this thing bad. It says, um, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, implacable, and, and merciful. Um, 132, yeah, merciful. Yeah, you got guys losing them. You got people losing their minds on the road, road, on road rage, man. Like, bro, it's not that serious. Chasing people around for blocks. Because you got cut off, man. Well, Roman 1 and 32, it says, Who, knowing the judgment of the Most High, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Now, that's the judgment. That's what you freed of. You freed, and well, in their mind, because everybody gets judged. I'm going to bring this for the precepts. It says, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. Like the report. The report said people were glad that 60% of America has accepted the lifestyle. You know, so... Hey, man. Isaiah 59 and um, 15, it says, Yea, true faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it, it displeased him that there was no judgment. All right, so we're displeased that there's no judgment. But we know there's judgment, but it's just the, the massive judgment hasn't happened yet. Um, but the Lord is also dis displeased, but... He is restrained because of his own words. He's bound by his own words. He's already set up a date. He's already set up a day and a date where he's going to let all hell breaks loose and he's going to let the whole sky fall and all that. But So he can't do it until that time comes because that will make him a liar. And the most high is not a man that he should lie. So he just cannot move, um, you know, outside of what he's uh, what he set up. This is... Um, Second Ezra 14 and 17, it says, For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, so much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. Right, and, and the key, the door, the, the wickedness um, and evil is weakness. Uh, you can't have all of this unless you have weak men. And that's where it starts, um, you know, to be able to establish this high level of wickedness, you must have weak men because the law is there and the law is good, but the men have to establish, you know, the law. They have to constantly judge and establish the law and punish. I always say this, man, listen, 
one of the things that made a lot of people back off off of, you know, a lot of these abominations, man, open executions, man. You know, I would say, you know, when you got people doing things to people, man, and they know that they did that person dirty, bro. And but because they've never seen something like an open execution, you know what I'm saying? Or like a, a street, like a street stoning. They're like, yeah, I did him dirty. Yeah, he kind of messed up for life. But who cares, man? Ah, you know, and they just keep it moving. Some of them just, some of them don't even think like that. Some of them just laugh. You know what I'm saying? They just laugh like, hey, I got him. You know what I'm saying? And then they just like, hey, I got him. I'm good. Ain't nothing going to happen. They don't even think that something going to happen, man. You know? So it's, 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 it's rough, man. Um, second as 14 and 17, it says, For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. So much the more shall evil increase upon them that dwell therein. So yeah, man. So we witnessing the evil. Uh, Ecclesiastes eight and eleven. It says, "Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil." Why right? two thirds out of the nation of Israel, man? Man, listen. That's also what's gonna make you know they they just they just listen. There's just no breaks. When it comes to the majority of you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, there's just no breaks in your souls and your conscience. And there's no repenting. There's no turning back. Um, you know, but the hopeful elect, man, you know, we know, hey, listen, the most I say, he's rich in mercy. Whatever you done, man, you repent and you offend less and you continue to try to do, push this word and believe in, in the son of the most high, your house shot to the, to the best of your ability. And, you know, you put all your bets on that, man. You know what I'm saying? And and that's it. <laughs> that's all you could do. I mean, you know, with the, the amount, listen, man, with the amount of evil that's going on, man, in this world, man, <sighs> that's why it's only going to take really faith and election faith, man. It's not going to be because you did something better than another man in the works, man. It's just so much evil, man. There's so many traps and so much temptations, so much wickedness, man. Like, it's it's bad, man. You know, um, that's why, right, man, we glad it all comes down to faith in your whole body. You know, and continue to do and doing the work, man, because, man, um, this is Romans, Romans chapter seven, verse 11. It says for sin. No, no, um, Romans seven and 12, actually, wherefore the law is holy and the commitment holy and just and good. All right. And we believe that, you know, for some reason they got this. They get this feeling, oh, man, great millstone, oh, you faith-based, you don't keep, man, listen, nobody keeps the law, statutes, commandments. I'm I'm willing to bet that nobody keeps the law, statutes, commandments better than us a great millstone. And we still believe that that's not going to be us at the way of our salvation. We put all that, our, 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 our bets on, on faith and believing. So, but what is believing? Believing is believing. It's pushing the word of Yahweh B'Hashim HaShah, like uh, pushing his doctrine 100%. You know, preach the word. And keep pushing. That's what believe, believe, believe in this. You know what I'm saying? And we keep the laws to the best of our ability. All right? Now, I'm going to end with this. This is Mark chapter 8, verse 38. It says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with his holy angels, right? So we're going to talk about it. I mean, I thought about making this video. I was like, oh, man, you know, it's one of those things where you know it's true. You know, it's so true. You trying to go trying to play around words. Hopefully you don't get canceled and all that other shit. But it's like, hey, man, can't be ashamed. You got you to gotta, yeah, you gotta do what you got to do. So that's all I have, you know, for you all sincere brothers. Um of course, the four winds, man. So I'm going to say, Carl I'm like, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Bashim, Hakodash. You know, double honors to our apostles, the elders, a great millstone, Shalom, salutation to you, say brothers, and a few sisters that listen, man. Because I'm a guy from a DC camp, Shalom.